We can apply a lipstick and chat at the same time. Yeah, you want to just start talking to the people? Yeah, I want to start talking to the people. Hello, people. Welcome to With Wit, date night edition. Date night with Wit. In tune. Yeah. Feels like we haven't been here in a while. And especially since we were going through our answers and commentary from last time like the goals were felt so long ago well we were traveling we were traveling i think i was about to head to new york for fashion week probably right before we did this mm -hmm. <laughs> people probably really miss us i think they probably really really yeah, really miss car, us like thank god they're back thank god <laughs> where do you think most people listen to podcasts in the car yeah i would say second most popular place would probably be like at the gym mm-hmm Third mm -hmm. most popular place would probably be in bed. Okay. <laughs> and then I'm done. You know, you don't have a fourth most don't. popular place? In the no. kitchen. Oh, doing dishes. Doing to be specific. dishes. Specific. Sometimes I want to listen to something while I'm doing dishes mm -hmm. because dishes are a very monotonous thing. Mm. And but but I, I've enjoyed them later on in life and we'll get to the goal from last time, which I was I know to work on my messiness, but I never know what to listen to uh -huh. when I'm doing the dishes on Alexa. Like, should I be like, tell me the news? But then I'm like, I don't really wanna like listen to the news. Uh -huh. <laughs> I think you should just well, for other people it should just be with wit with Tim date night edition. Yeah, yeah. Like th this is probably the best podcast for while you're doing dishes or in the car or at the gym. Agreed, but if you're me and I live with you, us and we I- We gotta figure it out for <laughs> you. Like... <laughs> but for everyone else out there, this is it. This is the okay. podcast. If we could capture the dishes doing market, like we would be like Joe Rogan. <laughs> That's to, not a bad market to be in. Yeah. Nobody, it's an untapped that market. market. F you, Joe. Well, Rogan. next time you guys are like, <gasps> next time you guys are like, I'm doing dishes and I'm so bored. And how can I kill two birds with one stone and become more educated and laugh and have a good time? Turn on with wit. Yes, turn on, but nobody's getting more educated. I don't have any facts for them. Yeah, educated on us. <laughs> yeah, fine. You wanna know like what I ate last week? Yeah. You, you, you come to the right place. Yeah, everything's an education. Yeah, okay. It's just, it's the content that, you know, whatever. So welcome to With Wit. I'm in a great mood. I had a good morning of taking care of myself, which I like tried everything in my head not to do. You know, I was like, go oh, take a walk. And then I got sidetracked on my phone. And then like I had left Love Island on and I was like, do I want to finish this scene? And then the, my brain popped on again and was like, go take a walk. And then I was like, but I need my headphones. And then I went to get my headphones and I found my light that needs to be charged. And then I went and charged my light. And then I was like, go take a walk. Yeah. <laughs> And, and then, then you did. I finally took a walk and it was great. And I listened to a podcast. Oh, um, about doing dishes? I listened to, no, I listened Joe to- Joe Rogan's podcast? My friend, Jackie Shimon, The Bitch Bible. Uh -huh. Then I took a shower outside and it well, was so nice. Self-care yeah. to the max. So I feel really good. I feel light and I'm excited for the type of work that we're doing today. Recording this and then going to check out a merch place. So how so are you? I'm good. I'm great. <laughs> He's not. I'm fine. Tell us how you really are. I'm fine. Okay. I played tennis this morning and I didn't play well. And, I was a bad, bad, and now bad, you're bad, in your feelings bad. about it. I'm not. I don't, even, I don't even have feelings. That's definitely I, I a lie. Feelings. You have a lot of feelings. No, I'm fine. I just. <sighs> All right. So let's just change the topic and what was your goal? Well, my goal was to be less messy. Was How'd to focus on the mess. I give myself a C minus. Mm. I feel like at home I've done a little bit better, but in my car it's like a nightmare right now. Mm -hmm. Like I have packages from PR that are half opened. Mm -hmm. I have like probably an old coffee bean, maybe a half drink tea in my little fridge thing, like probably some like an old salad. Probably that emergency oh my god, yeah, that you emergency had in there salad. for a few days. <laughs> I have to have emergency salad in case it was good for me to know it was there. <laughs> well, my goal was to do some more mindful eating. Mm -hmm. I didn't do that. Oh, shit, man. When we leave here, we have to say our goals to ourselves more than just 
what we're saying here to each other. We have to leave here and remember mm, that. That's a fact. Because I think that we do this and we're like in recording mode and then we leave and it's like kind of like a blackout of what we talked about. And I think we have to remember that there are certain things from this date night that are actually very therapeutic and cathartic and motivating. <laughs> Yeah. Right? They're cardiac. So yours was to eat more protein. Yours was to think about eating a little bit more. What if you're hungry? Do I need this snack? How's this going to make me feel? I'm doing pretty good with my after dinner snacking. Good. Limited. Not like overeating all the time. I did okay. I just didn't think about it. All right. Well, what's on your mind? Let's roll into something on my mind. Something on my mind. Something on my mind. So we haven't really discussed a lot on here. And we've obviously been dealing with a lot on our own and discussed it. But we have been going through the motions of like some fertility stuff. I think everybody on here knows if you listen to my podcast on CCRM, I like really updated everybody on where we were at and that we were using a surrogate and that we had had two miscarriages. And I think just like to Cliff's notes where we're at now and what's on my mind is just sort of like <laughs> trying to stay in the moment and not making any plans before we know everything. So we had gotten a second opinion from a doctor a week ago. We went to another doctor just to see if I could actually carry. And she had seen some scar tissue in there, a good amount of scar tissue that she thought was probably from the previous miscarriages and the multiple DNCs. And I feel like I'm telling you everything that you already know, but just to like catch up the listener. It's got to be for them too. Yes. They're the ones doing the dishes <laughs> yeah so the reason we had gone in to go see her was because after these two failed transfers with the surrogate it's just been a lot of money and a lot of emotions and a lot of stuff that we've been through so we were like should i just try this on my own like i feel like i'm in a much better place i'm like emotionally and physically more healthy like let's see what we can do so we had this doctor's appointment she said i had this scar tissue i went to the radiologist on friday to get something called an hsg test where they like fill you up with a certain colored liquid and they're able to see what's happening in your uterus and your fallopian tube just to make sure that everything looks like what it's supposed to in order for implantation. And long story short, they thought everything looked fine and that I wasn't going to need this follow up surgery. But I think last week I had hit this low before having this procedure of like, what are we going to do? Like, can I even carry? Are we going to do a sur surrogate? This is too much for me. I don't even want to deal with it. And I think it was all hitting me like that because one, I was like really sick and, and exhausted and had just come off of, I don't know, was in like sort of a depressed state. Like it can be and everything felt like uh, it was like worst case scenario. And I guess what's on my mind now is just like really trying to take this all s step by step and not feel future spiral because there's no point in future spiraling until you have answers from like what the next step that you're supposed to do is. You know what I mean? So uh, I'm trying to take it in small steps as opposed to looking at it so like macro and bird's eye view and getting really overwhelmed by it because I do feel like not complete. Like I want this for us. I want this for me. I want this for Sunny. I want this for you. Right. It's a lot to deal with. Yeah, so that's what's on my mind. Right, mine too. Mm -hmm. And like, it's not that we got into a fight, but you know, it was your birthday. Mm -hmm. You were sick. Like you hadn't eaten anything in a couple of days because you know it was a stomach flu, and like you were spiraling. Mm -hmm. So for the guys, all five of them listening, um, <laughs> I think I'm still learning when it's the right time to listen and mm -hmm. validate your feelings. And, and that's it. Or like, listen, validate your feelings and problem solve, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes when you problem solve with your partner and you're both dealing with something, it can seem like offering a suggestion for how to help can sometimes have the opposite effect mm -hmm. intended. I know, I know. I feel bad for you now, like looking back on mm. it, because of course, the logical thing to do when you see someone in need or having a hard time is to like try to think of options, solutions for how they can get out of it, you right. know? But and I should have like, known. You're there. Yeah, I guess brain. it's just like, yes, right now it sucks. Like, just let's like, talk about this. Like you were, you did say that too. Like, let's reconvene on this, like when 
and we're not in this place. We haven't really talked about it, so I feel like we're reconvening now. Mm -hmm. I know, because we haven't really updated since I had the meltdown and was like, this is just too much for me. Yeah. I feel like it's not too much for me in this moment. Right. And that's what I keep on trying to tell myself that like go through the motions and only do what you can do what feels right to you in that moment. And like I feel hopeful about what the doctor saw on Friday and that if it's not going to be as difficult as I thought in my head it was going to be. Mm -hmm. So now such wasted time that I worried about that, that I can handle this, you know. So it's just proof to like, especially with health stuff and, and specifically with this fertility stuff, when there's so much that we can't control that is like medical and scientific that we're, we're trying to desperately to like create the formula and tell the future and we just have to release that so I'm good in this moment I feel like we'll wait to hear what Dr. Beck says after talking to the radiologist and we'll see whether it's something that we want to just like enjoy and try and take the pressure off for a little while and me like maybe not be a lab rat and go straight into IVF but it'll be one of those options and I feel fine about it right now great I mean, from my perspective, it has very little to do with me at this point. Like, it's easy for me to be like, okay, like the next step is just waiting to hear back from the doctor yeah. to see what is possible. I'm not even uh, thinking about the next steps after that. Yeah, you're so lucky that you... Oops, see, like, did lucky. I just make a mistake? No, no, no. That That's your truth. So that's S fair. And I think that that should be a goal. Like, I think that that's real present mindful thinking. I don't know if there's something because you're not the one that necessarily has to take any action. Maybe that's the reason why you're not thinking about it right it's easy for you to spiral into the future it's not just the disappointment of of things not working out even though that is the biggest part of it but like i think a part of it that people don't talk about as much is like the part of it that makes it feel like a second job the scheduling of doctors the calling of insurance the filling out of form the like going parking waiting checking in mm -hmm. all of that times a billion because there's a million different mm -hmm. appointments and things we have to make like all of that and then comparing stuff. this doctor to that doctor in this procedure versus that that one and like having to know your research and feeling like you don't know enough and want thinking that you should be trusting your doctors but like can you trust your doctors there's just so much right. like actual work and production and like mental mental space exhaustion yeah it is a lot i completely yeah. get it but for me the next step is like she gets the results and we hear what she thinks are the next steps uh -huh. and i don't know there's just like a wall for everything after that not like to not be prepared or to like keep your head in the sand but it's just there's no point in w in using any of my brain power for the next five steps until we just get done with the next step in front of us. Mm -hmm. I need to but take me more telling, of a page out of that book. Yeah. But but like when you're spiraling, I can't tell you that or it's just it doesn't work. No, I have to tell myself that because yeah. I, I believe that and that's how I want to think. And that's what actually helps me. And that's what I don't want to say everyone says, but like at least my therapist right now, when you start to spiral like this, you need to be rooted back in reality. You have to get rooted back in reality. So you have to ask yourself, like, what is actually happening right now with the information that I've been given? Like, can I even make a decision? Is it worth me spiraling? Because like, do I need more answers? Do I need to have more conversations? Like, this is not worthy of my brain power. So, yeah, I think that women and men can get there. I think that it's just harder for women in this scenario because we have to sort of like, quote, pay the consequences when it comes down to actually like getting pregnant, showing up to the appointment getting stuck with the needles. Yeah, I agree. Um, yeah, but the point it. I'm trying to make is like, we're in it, we're in this, not fight, but like you're spiraling and I'm trying to help you. And I'm saying, just take it one step at a time. Uh -huh. But like me in my position, even though that's the right advice, and if someone else told you it, it might hit home, it just doesn't land the same. I think it will moving forward. Mm. I think if you were to say something to me, like just a reminder, this is all we know right now. Like, let's just take it one step at a time. You'd be like, you it's so easy for you to say it's not your body and i'll be like oh god <laughs> all right well it sounds like a plan by the way we have a name is that bad luck to have a name if we ever have like, a second do baby we have a name yeah yeah <laughs> we're not going to tell you. We'll tell you in three podcasts. It, it if works you for a boy or a all. girl. Yeah. All right. Well, I mean, that's heavy shit. Yeah, that was a lot. <sighs> Let's take a deep breath.
Deep breaths feel so good. And this actually so is a really good segue into my sunny thing. Yeah. Which is that it's just confirmation that everything is a phase to all you parents out there struggling with whatever phase it is that you're dealing with your baby, toddler, whatever right now. Like I was worried Sunny was going to like not want to cuddle, not want to be lovey dovey. It's like whenever I would try to tell him about deep breaths, he would like, well, I don't want to take a deep breath, like very just rash. And I don't want right. to say You'd typical just behavior. take it one step at a time. You're like, you take it one yeah. step at a time. And now I'll say, let's take a deep breath. And I'll take a deep breath and I'll really see him do it. And then like this morning, I'll be like, come cuddle with me. And he just comes and cuddles with me. And he like doesn't want to leave. In the, and he wants, he's okay leaving in the morning to go to school, but he can't get enough hugs. And he's like just such a sweet, cuddly, cuddly boy. Yeah, I got nothing to complain about for Sonny. Mm -hmm. Sorry. You don't have, there's nothing to, no, it I know. doesn't it's even have thing. to be it was a complaint a sarcastic, thing. Sorry. Mm -hmm. But he's great. He's doing great. And we got his report card. His progress report. Yeah. yeah. And his teachers love him and he's doing well and he's smart and he did well on his tests and he's starting to really like sports. Not that that matters. If he didn't like it, he didn't like it, but he's like getting yeah. into things. And he's a good goalie. He let, he doesn't want to play on the field for soccer, but he, he likes does. His... I've seen him oh, do really? that, but he's great. And like his music teacher, like went out of her way to stop us and say how great he is in class. And like just other people out there in the world, independent of us, like love him. And it's because we did a good job and I feel proud. Mm hmm. And we're not done. We have a lot more work to no, do. No, I'm done. You're done. Okay, I'm, I'll be bu I'm busy. <laughs> I've taught him everything I have to teach him, and he's on his own. My favorite part of the progress report was when she said that he was like the first one to come and hug her when she walks in the class, and then everyone else comes and hugs yeah, her. Yeah, that was sweet. I'm happy he he gets school and he's doing fine in those tests. You know, like that he's whatever but it's like the person that he is that's the most important part for right me. that and the and the test scores yeah that yeah <laughs> those are the two most he's important. above average he's way above average 91st percentile <laughs> for height <laughs> no for language arts in okay. the country okay in the nation all right that's 50 states if you count Alaska. Timmy, what is a pop thing that happened this week that you want to talk about? Yeah. My palate needs to be cleansed. Yes. Pop culture palate cleanser. <laughs> do, do, do. <laughs> All right. I have three pop culture things I want to talk about. Okay. Nominees, and we can spend time on one or all, whatever you want to do. It's a totally relaxed format. Okay. okay? Ready? People who have stressed out podcasts like Joe Rogan can go f*** themselves. <laughs> you really are on a Joe Rogan crusade I don't today. even care. I don't even know anything about Joe Rogan. <laughs> he likes a cold plunge. Cool. You like a cold plunge too. I did a hot plunge. Does, does <laughs> you get any credit for that? I went in a hot tub. All right. I was in it for four hours. Is that healthy? It's got to be healthy. Also, I'm not peeing in the hot tub. That's a big thing. Okay? Yeah, no, you should. A lot know. of respect. Respect. For others. And yeah. Sonny won't pee in it either. No, taught him I, that. Mm -mm. I've already taught him not to pee in a hot tub. What so else easy. could he need to know? <laughs> It's so easy for guys to not pee in the hot tub. But all they have to do is just like stand up and pee out into the bushes. That's true. I mean, Can't when girls, we're at home. If you stood up and peed, what would happen? <laughs> So it depends. Like every guy just leaned in. It depends. Like, do you want to? Do you want me to show you? Yes. Okay. This is our pop culture palate cleanser. <laughs> so there's a few options. You got to talk louder though. There's like you just stand like this. Uh huh. And it just goes running down both of your double thighs. stream. Okay. You know Whoa. Where it's gonna go. It's okay. Like Why is it split? So that's you can't stand straight. You can't stand like. Like, who's going to go in public and go like this? Also, you have to wipe yourself. If you don't wipe yourself, like, you can get a UTI. The best way when you were younger was to just go in a field like this. Uh huh. Do you have to wipe yourself if you do that? Did you just wait? Did you just wiggle? It's like frog pose. Uh huh. And then it comes out in one stream? Once and it doesn't touch anything. You just have to watch for a splatter. Do you have to wipe then? I mean, you. It's you best to. It's best to. We find a leaf. Ooh, a leaf. Yeah, so that's why we don't pee in public. Because it's you don't know it's what, where it's gonna go. Yeah, 
Got it. Okay, back to your pop culture palettes. We watched the Oscars. Yeah. Apparently, we're big award show people now. <laughs> like, watch them start to finish. That's weird. I of really. Us. <laughs> I like them. I've always liked award shows. You I've, have. Yeah. I've. I always grew up watching award shows with my family. That's cute. Yeah, we watched the red carpets and then watched the whole thing. When I was little, I like wanted to be Julia Roberts. You are Julia Roberts. <laughs> the modern day Julia Roberts. Yeah, you're the Julia Roberts <laughs> of podcasts. All right. Well, what did you think of the Oscars? I mean, my main takeaway was Ryan Gosling's face. Yeah. Is anyone even talking about it? Nobody's even talking about it. I don't know. It. I Why don't... aren't more people talking about Olivia, did you notice that or are we crazy? What? Like what? Ryan Gosling, just like that he looked like so puffy. He's got plastic like, surgery face. Like filler face. Yeah. I didn't notice that. No. I saw the sunglasses. I just saw the... I was just mm. watching the His face looked like it had plastic surgery. Yeah, it looked like a balloon and it shiny. Did, it did it was... not. I mean, maybe this is not nice to talk about about we can cut it i don't know but that was the main takeaway for me was like what'd you do to your face guy yeah i had no takeaways i thought it was so boring yeah it was a little it was a little boring this is going to be aired next tuesday so you may not even so nobody even cares, cares about it anymore <laughs> nobody's going to care about that's what i'm saying nobody's going to care about any of this pop culture shit some of it can be relevant okay yeah if it's about dishes all right I my, have one that's relevant my other one will be relevant in a week yeah okay is it about kate middleton no. Because I am interested in Kate Middleton. <laughs> okay. Because she hasn't been talking to the press for a while. And everyone's like, where's Kate Middleton? And uh -huh. I'm pretty sure she was dead or something. Like, there, I was ready for a big conspiracy theory, uh -huh. at least to perpetuate one. Uh -huh. Yeah. You were ready to spread some rumors. Yeah. And get I mean, I'm still like, trying. I yeah. think she's dead. You do. I think Kate Middleton is dead. And unless uh she comes on this podcast and says she's not, then she is. <laughs> Wasn't it confirmed that she had some stomach surgery and then like she posted a picture with her kids and then it like, had a, a lot of photo shop. First of all, let's let's dive into that for a second. OK, one initial reaction who gives a if you're photoshopping Agreed. something. But second reaction, more petty, shitty one is like, what are you doing? That's what I want to know why what she was photoshopping, because the photo was so it, it wasn't like she made herself one way or the other more or whatever. It was like there was a strange zip and then like uh, someone's sleeve like went uh, into okay. nowhere. It's just clear that they had Photoshop. To what end? I don't know. Mm -hmm. Maybe she wasn't in the photo. Yeah, I mean, that's possible. Because she's gone. And Prince William killed her <sighs> to death. Okay. I don't know what's going on. Is this how rumors get started? I don't know. You're making me want to look into it more because no, I, we don't do that here. I saw on the explore page like part of her hair wasn't matching and part of like the tiles on the floor weren't matching. And right? Why? I don't know. Have you ever photoshopped a photo? Thing that's yes, that's I'm in definitely. The, I mean, I've filtered photos before. Filtering, yes. But like, what I'm talking about, this, like, like misshape, like move. I don't know. Like uh, the internet is up in arms when the Kardashians do something. I don't know if it's to make their wrists look skinny or whatever the, yes. the purpose is. Yes. But people don't like it. People don't like it. They want the truth. They want the and truth. And the press was upset. The press was like, you can't lie to us. Yeah. <laughs> yourself, I know, the Guardian that's also true because the press is also lying to us all the time. Yeah, you're lying to us. It just feels like it's like if you're doing that, what else are you doing? Probably not having stomach surgery. That What's, st what's stomach surgery? I don't know. Did her appendix burst? I don't know. I thought boob job, but... Like she couldn't just come out and say that? I How long does it take to recover from a boob job? I thought like a two weeks, so that's mm. why it's like a little bit weird. I Has anyone know. seen her? She's dead. I'm, I'm, I need to do a little <laughs> bit Are more we gonna research. be able to make those? She's dead. Joke? Okay. Yes, it's okay. fine. I'm just kidding. Um, She's alive, probably. I mean, I haven't heard from her. Have you heard from her? Text her. Text her. I, I know. Text her. I, I, I texted text, her text a her. week ago, and she didn't respond. So I was like, if she doesn't text me by tomorrow, I'm just gonna job. reach out. Call the press. <laughs> yeah. And then I have her on find my phone too. Yeah. Where and is she? I I don't know. I feel like she's had it turned Balmoral? off. Balmoral. She's, she's at Balmoral. She's had it. What's Balmoral? Wait, let me. Let let me check. <laughs> okay. Kate, call us. Okay. We're worried. All right. My other pop culture thing was Andy Cohen coming for you. Just kidding. <laughs> Not kidding. Um, <laughs> So he's in a lawsuit with Leah Mob, right? Or yeah, with a bunch of people. With Leah, I don't know, Brandy Glanville, Glanville. Who, like, if you were at a lawsuit, would you want Brandy Glanville on your side? No, she's not like She's a, not adding credibility. No, she's not a credible witness. No, she's a hostile witness. Yeah, for sure. You're a lawyer, right? Uh, yes. Yes. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> 
I object. <laughs> That's how lawyers speak. <laughs> You're dressed like a lawyer who's going to go to I'm a sure, gym. Exactly. <laughs> this is like what my FBI agent aunt used yes. to wear. Like she would wear workout clothes because she was like addicted to working out. And like she would always have like some athleisure with like a suit jacket and then like her gun in her, in her elastic, you know? Yeah. <laughs> That's badass. Yeah. This one's for you, Wendy. Well, basically, Leah is saying that that he like offered cocaine to his favorite housewives, which like, is that a crime? I guess cocaine is a crime. I mean, is off. Yeah, I guess it's doing- like being generous is not that. That's a nice thing. I would never sue someone. Or I don't know. I don't know where the suing comes in there. But then the other part is she's like the producers pressured me to drink, knowing I was sober for like ratings, which I'm sure they do across in a the subtle, board. In a subtle way, yes, they do. Or in a subtle or not so subtle way. I don't know with her situation. Well, we don't but know I, anything. Yeah, that, we don't know anything. That is. But I know we've been urged to drink, like in reality TV. Yeah, that happens. Yeah, yeah. And I think that there's a larger discussion here about Andy Cohen, who might personify this problem. But reality TV is about the crumbling of people's lives and yeah. us getting to watch it as viewers and producers have to be responsible for promoting that. But then again, you know, the people who go on the show have to know what they're signing up for. Yeah. I, where is the line drawn? Who's responsible? And then ultimately, what role do we play as the viewers who eat this shit up? Is it our fault? If we weren't watching it, they wouldn't be making it, right? I, I know. The and egg. like these people want us to watch it. Like I feel like Leah, I'm sorry to say, like if she were asked back and successful from it wouldn't be in this situation sorry but we love leah I, but i hear what you're saying yeah. it's like you sign up for these shows you know they're about that's what i think i think you sign up for these shows and you understand that not only are they not necessarily going to show your reality and they're going to edit the shit out of you to make you look like the worst version possible of yourself but every aspect of your personal life is going to be messed with and like if you don't know that going into it like i think that's on you no one should be forced to drink in any work setting but like like, who's actually forcing anybody to drink? I always had agency. I can only speak from my own perspective, from like being someone that has been produced. I always felt like at the end of the day, it was still my decision to be made. For sure. You know, For like sure. nobody else could force me to do something. No, but. I think beyond producers forcing or encouraging cast to do things that they don't want for mm -hmm, ratings, mm -hmm. these shows, especially at the reunions, they pretend like Andy is some kind of therapist, mm -hmm. like trying to mend relationships when the truth is these shows exist when the relationships are torn apart. Mm -hmm. And like he is the puppet master of all of that and mm -hmm. sitting there playing therapist just feels very hypocritical. Now, I'm not saying these shows should be about mending the relationships. We watch it to watch the train wreck and we play a part in it too but there is some duplicity that rubs me the wrong way i agree so i would ask you like if you were andy yeah and you developed this i'd network, like to be the new the new nicer Andy. i know and you had started this network and like had these what reality we call shows it? first of all i, I don't think you the... would be hosting the reunions mm. like i would get a Hurtful. andy no i'm just saying like he should have taken himself out oh, of this right, from the beginning right, like right. how could he have not seen that being the face of he... this this, like, he is a character on these shows now. Yeah. I agree. Maybe you should have stayed out of it. Maybe you should have gotten Jenny Mai to do all the on-camera stuff. Or maybe Whitney Port. <laughs> call us <laughs> no but it's like i agree is it our fault we're watching it but it's these people they signed up they wanted the paycheck you know what i mean i know they want us to watch it they want us to watch it everyone wants us to watch it that's a fact yeah the cast wants you to watch it they don't want to show their life falling apart but when you know season five is in question they're ready to throw the shit around yeah i don't know i'm like i I'm think it's ultimately the viewing public's fault i think that there is a market for for it and someone is going to step up and mm -hmm. deliver it whether mm -hmm. it's Andy Cohen or someone else mm -hmm. but I think there's a way to make these shows responsibly and, mm -hmm. and at least not pretend like you're doing a therapy session you yeah. know you're just here to stir up shit yeah. yeah and if you want to stay out of it get someone else to do it right but I do recognize our part in it as being the ultimate bad guys because we watch it we watch it and we react to it we love it we're the worst
Oh, God. God, I went from feeling so good. All right, what were your pop culture palate cleansers? Well, mine was just like, it's The Bachelor and next week is the finale. Mm. Um, the Bachelor is just so cute this season and I kind of wish you were watching with me because I think that you really would have liked it. And it reminded me how important just The Bachelor being likable, <laughs> how much that adds to like the whole season. Mm -hmm. And He is likable? He's so likable. What's his name? I don't even know. <laughs> mm, I like that name. <laughs> Oh my God, Andy Cohen. No, wait, I can't remember. But he's really cute and he's really sweet and really warm. And I feel like the girls aren't good enough for him. Mm. And I'm just excited to be back into like a Bachelor franchise and excited for the finale. Place. All right, I'll watch the finale will with you, you. Will you? Yeah, I love you, baby. Okay. I'll do whatever you want. Andrea asked if we want no, to watch she, it together. No, she's not invited. Andrea, you're disinvited. Just kidding. If you went on The Bachelor mm -hmm. right now, you think you'd make it to Hometowns? No. What? You're so hot. Oh my God, babe, this couple couple weeks ago, the whole storyline was about this, how this one 30 year old was, was like too old because too old, she was like on the fast track to wanting kids. Mm -hmm. And the bachelor wasn't ready for that. This guy sounds like a dick. <laughs> Don't rant on my parade. Don't, Don't be yuck jealous. My yum. Don't yuck my yum. I'm not jealous. I hear he's a tennis player. Mm hmm jealous of that tell you mm -hmm. that much right now mm -hmm. you're a tennis player too babe no i'm not it's one of the reasons why i like you because you're an athlete mic out of my face you're an athlete and you smell like grass thanks i love you too it's like what my dad used to always smell like it's great i'm replacing your dad i'm sure that'll be an easy <laughs> some money for some therapist there <laughs> Like I'm Babe, a different you person. You replaced him 11 years ago. I You're know. already, you've already <laughs> subconsciously <laughs> filled that role. Okay. <laughs> All right. That's for another podcast. Yeah. Ask Joe Rogan about that. <laughs> well, he's in a nice plunge. All right. Well, what was the best thing you ate this week? Mm, the best thing what I ate. I didn't have anything that to was eat. like, I, yeah, I, I didn't eat anything this week. This she had week a stomach was, flu. there was nothing calling out my name. So, like, the first thing on the tip of my tongue was my blended boba from Earth Cafe, which now I do blended instead of ice. What does that mean? For everyone coming to LA, go to Earth Cafe, get a mint boba. It's like a blended smoothie with like matcha powder. You already lost me. Milk. What is blended? The drink. What it's drink? It's like ice, okay. milk, and matcha. Okay, there you go. And that gets blended. Mixed together, Got blended. It. And then they put in the boba. And what is boba? Boba is tapioca. And what is tapioca? Tapioca is a root vegetable vegetable I think that's then made into like a gelatin what it's a root vegetable what are boba in... balls made out of boba pearls are made of tapioca starch that comes from the cassava root so compassionate customers can rest easy knowing that gelatin is not used in the making of these tiny balls of deliciousness <laughs> <laughs> cassava root so that's the deal that I, was my best thing I had I didn't have a best thing I ate either you because didn't. I didn't eat anything good you're going to dinner tonight I bet it's gonna yeah. be delicious where are you going? I'm going to Cut Sidecar. What's that? Just like the bar at Cut. Oh, that's cute. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm jealous. Oh. Um, Not like in a bad way. Oh, in a good way. Yeah. Oh. I have a dinner tomorrow night with my girlfriends at 8 at Cipriani. Oh, see you guys there. I'll see you there. <laughs> you can get there. <laughs> it will be in the past. Yeah, if you could get in the past. <laughs> so I'm going to tell you about the worst thing I ate, which was that Chinese meat I tried to make. Oh. Barf in my mouth. Barf rama. <laughs> oh, God. So, Whitney bought. Oh, my God. Are we touching feet? Yeah, heels to toes. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. If you're in a bad mood, just start a podcast and go record an episode. If you're in a bad mood, just hang out with me. Yeah, just hang out with us on withwit.com and do the dishes. Okay, next. <laughs> we haven't been enjoying Whole Foods meat. Sorry, Whole Foods and Amazon and Jeff Bezos, but it hasn't been good, so step it up. It's so true. Whitney got some packaged meat. It's like Kobe style. Yeah. Kobe? It was like a Wagyu, I Wagyu. thought, from the Sunny yeah. Foods in Brentwood. And it probably didn't need this technique applied to it, but I did it anyway. It's called velveting, and it's where, yeah, deep breath. It was disgusting. <laughs> you take the meat and you what? cut. Wait, no! before we get into it, what? what makes you think that I was ever going to like a velvety meat? Like, in what world would I like velvety meat? It makes it more tender. And the last time we <clears throat> I made steak, it was too tough. Okay, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. See the logic there? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Jerk. <laughs> so what you do is you cut the meat across the grain into thin slices, you know, like you would for like a beef and broccoli dish. And then you put baking soda on it and like a little bit of water and then like your flavor. And I wonder if I had stopped there if it would have been good, but I added fish sauce, 
which is gross. Oh, God. I thought fish sauce was going to taste like plum sauce or like tamarind sauce or like something that tasted fucking good. It tastes like fish, shockingly enough. You didn't taste it before you put it in. No, I just put it right in. Oh, my yeah, God. Yeah, it was a mistake. And then I also added flour. Oh, um, I'm not surprised. Because I thought it could be like it would then give it like the crispy outside. Mm-hmm. Were you stoned? Yeah, probably <laughs> not on cocaine. Yeah. Anyway, it didn't work out. So if anyone is listening, can you tell me where I went wrong. Was it the fish sauce? Was it the baking soda? Was it the flour? Because I'd like to try it again, maybe Mm -hmm. with some, maybe the meat was already tender. Maybe this is what you do for like shittier meat. Anyway, really, I'm sorry about that. It was bad. It's okay. It's okay. I forgave you. There was enough for me to eat. And I think I just like gorged on candy afterwards. Great. Sounds like we're doing really well at home. Let's go eat something good now. Yeah, we will. I'm going to eat good tonight. All right. Did you you have any brain farts this week? Brain farts. I heard you say earlier you didn't. That's great. I didn't. Not that I could remember unless this is a brain fart of a brain fart. Oh, brain fart is you forgot. Yeah, so Inception of me. Oh, we started watching Inception (laughs) when he got through the first 13 minutes. (laughs) Should be really easy for her to keep up with watching it in eight nights. Yeah, I have the whole plot down. They're like in a dream. In a dream. Sometimes. In a dream. Yeah. Sometimes four times sometimes and deep it, they go deep yeah into the dream they're like let me sleep yeah oh you got it that feeling gave me anxiety of like them waking up i was mm-hmm. like no let them sleep mm-hmm. like i don't want them to wake up but the goal for next week no we're not there yet oh your brain fart my brain fart i scheduled a youtube live oh yeah join us on youtube whitneyport.com slash youtube youtube.com slash whitneyport <laughs> that's one way to get to it there's a lot of different ways now whitney on the internet and i scheduled it and then just didn't didn't <laughs> just go didn't, didn't it. do it <laughs> i got a message on my instagram i was like i think timmy's supposed to be on the live yeah i got right amy now. odell probably was from her <laughs> she's good looking out so did you reschedule another one yeah rescheduled it and did it oh good yeah that's when i said it for kids and then there was no comments and i had to redo it it was a few brain farts <laughs> in one story but eventually we did it you got it done and everyone enjoyed the live uh, we're on track babe what is your goal for next week two things easy peasy art of cheesy <laughs> okay <laughs> okay first is just move move my body i mm. don't care whether mm. that's like a 15 minute melissa wood stretch whether that's a 10 minute walk whether that's a tennis lesson whether that's a hot yoga class whether that's just rolling my neck yeah, you and, gotta do more than rolling okay neck. fine yeah, but <laughs> I'm taking that off the list whatever it is i need to do like some sort of purposeful movement okay and meditate just meditate i've been doing my meditations every day and they're impactful and i just want to continue my streak okay great what's yours oh i don't know there's nothing you want to give me one I mean, when you're operating at, you know, just maximum efficiency, like there's not a lot of room for goals. I'd like to score a goal. Yeah, I know you, your golf, you have some big matches this week. Mm -hmm, I know. mm -hmm. Yeah. I'd like to hit the ball from inside out. That's my real goal. I know deep down that's what your real goal goal is. You can say it. He's a golf, you know, he likes golf. I like golf. Sorry. He's one of those guys. He's a nerd. (laughs) Like, let me just explain it. Okay. (laughs) Okay. Oh my God. Remember when you got mad at me the other night about something about golf and you were like, don't pretend like you care. (laughs) I don't talk like that. So that's one. I mean, you're being a major. (laughs) Such a lady. Let me just explain to you something about golf. Okay. Nobody cares. I need you to care. I care. I care. Nobody else cares. Fine. Let's get the check. Okay. I'm ready to go. All right. Love you. Thanks for having a date with me. Same. When are we going to go on a real date? <laughs> we need to. Next week. Okay. I'm in. All right. Happy birthday. Love you. Bye. Bye.